All right, so welcome back to my video talking a little bit more about sequencing. This video is going to build upon a previous video here whereby last video we talked specifically about a static mesh actor where all we had to do was play through and we used as far as the basic elements from the place actors, we actually used a static mesh actor. The next thing though is what if I actually wanted to use a piece of geometry here? So for instance, let me go ahead and demonstrate for you here kind of some of the things that can go wrong with a piece of geometry. So let's say I grab a cylinder and let me go ahead here. I'm going to kind of shrink my cylinder here a little bit, kind of thin it out, make it a little less tall and I'm going to bring it down to the ground here. So again, the beauty of working with different types of I'll go ahead and place a material just so that we can see it a little bit better. One of the beauties of working with as, uh, your different geometry brushes here is that you do under the modes here, you can go into a brush editing mode that you can change around as far as the design goes. One misleading thing though about working with a geometric brush though, and I'm gonna now demonstrate one of the problems here. Because it looks like a static mesh object, you may say to yourself, well, okay, so the last time I did this for a static object, okay, I'm gonna go into track, I'm gonna go to the actor sequence and hey, there's my brush. So I'll go ahead and just add the brush again and I'm gonna go ahead and choose transform once again from my track and okay, great. So this should just work exactly like it did as far as you know as far as the static mesh goes so i'd say to myself okay i'm going to add that there and maybe have it go to 60 and then have it rise up and go ahead and change the location again i want to draw your attention though notice what happens in the scene here the brush kind of shuts down here and goes into a see-through method so like if i actually play Notice I don't even see my brush at this point. That is one of the misleading elements here as far as if I wanted to create a specific item or a specific brush to be animated. We have to take one extra step to work with brushes, especially if you have a brush that you have gone into the brush editing mode and made changes to. This is also a good demonstration too. So you added something to your sequencer and you're like, you know what, Never mind. I need to delete it. You can just highlight, hit the delete key on your keyboard. And what's really nice about this is if I come back over to the outliner, my cylinder brush is still in place here. So I can go ahead and rebuild my level for a second. And the brush is right back where I had it before. So it's not a matter of not only did you delete the brush from the sequencer and also deleted it from the level, all you've done is removed it from your sequencer, but it's still hanging out in the level. So what if I have my heart set on using this geometric brush here? One thing under the brush settings in details, so you wanna make sure that your cylinder brush is selected. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. So I'm going to call this Brush to Static Mesh. Because Unreal does offer us an option to switch an object to a static mesh. Now remember, you want to be careful when you do this. You want to make sure that you have every set thing set up correctly, everything edited how you wanted it before you do this conversion. But let's say I'm happy with my cylinder. Coming up back under the details, keeping that brush selected here, you'll see some familiar elements here. You'll see the transform, but I'm going to minimize that so you can see. You want to go under brush settings. Now, by default here, you already have a lot of options here, but one thing that they kind of hide from you in Unreal is right at the bottom here. There's a little double arrow to expand to show advanced options. One of the advanced options to be able to animate a brush is to create a static mesh from the brush. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. 
and notice it wants to save it in my level folder in the content environment and it's adding just static mesh at the end and I'm fine with that so I'll tell it to create a static mesh. And now just to show you here whenever I come into my environment now notice there's the static sphere notice its icon as far as the little house but now notice how the brush to static mesh has now changed as far as its layout goes. It is now considered a static mesh. You can also tell the difference too, like real quickly here, if I pull in a box next to this here. Notice how I had the capability here with the box as a brush. I have the blue corners as far as uh, my different points. I can select the faces. I've now lost that capability with this cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the box brush. But now what I can do is under the track options, if I go to action sequencer, there's that brush to static mesh, static mesh I just made. And now what I can do, it remembers I wanted to transform. So maybe now I change the location. I'm going to make it take as long, but in this, this one, I'm going to make it go upward and I'll add a new keyframe there. And now if I hit play, you can see that it actually animates here. So this is the steps that you're going to need to take if you want to actually use a piece of geometry. Now, another thing that you may be noticing here in closing is because both of these elements are tied to this specific sequencer, they are at the mercy of the playback options. So both of them are looping indefinitely. This can actually be a big benefit as far as sequencers go. Again, I chose with my animations for both of these static meshes that they would move at the exact same times. You have the control between each individual object that you can have them moving at different points as far as, you know, maybe having a platforms that are at different times. Uh, some are quicker than others, some are slower than others, uh, you know, setting it up so that maybe you have one going up while, or down while the other is moving left to right so a user can actually jump on them. So having one sequencer that contains all of that can really help clean up your map. So again, I save my sequencer and just to finalize and come back in and show you now what is contained inside of my content browser here, Notice my brand new mesh that I made from the geometry. I still have the level I'm working in. There's my demo sequence. And then again, I made a basic material just so you could see what's going on in the level here. And that's some of the bare bones as far as getting started with a sequencer.